All right, folks, are you serious? Are you serious? I've got my good buddy with me, John Dislin, with me right now from Georgia. John, I like calling you Big John. Sure. You truly are. You're the first guy that had to duck to come in the door. <laughs> <laughs> I told Brock, I said, well, you'll see. This guy's pretty big. You need, to, you need to understand. He goes, how big is he? I said, he'll duck to come through that door. He goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> Brock's six foot two, and it's yeah. like, uh, no. <laughs> anyway, I mean, you played basketball at the University of Virginia. Yeah. Had yeah. to guard Ralph Sampson every day in practice. Yeah, that was uh, an experience. Yeah. He's only four inches taller than yeah. me. So, you, know, <laughs> you were looking up at him. Figured it out. Pretty good player, really. Yeah. Well, he was three-time <laughs> National Player of the Year, and yeah. uh, there aren't many of those. No. But uh, he has the distinction of being the only man to ever dribble over my head. <laughs> Uh, so that was a fun moment. That was a great moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would have been a great YouTube highlight if we could have got that. <laughs> yeah. Folks, John Dislin has been a student of alternative history and world events since 2007, a lifelong student of scripture and Christian doctrine, following careers in finance, and as an internet entrepreneur, he turned his attention to today's emerging issues, including training in counter human trafficking pistol and rifle tactics, ham radios, communications, and scout tactics. John was, has turned around his life by Jesus Christ in 2014 and is a blood-bought chief sinner who strives to do his imperfect best to follow Jesus' plan for his life. That's a mouthful. Man, you sound, <laughs> sound a little bit like Apostle Paul there. You know, he said, I'm chief among sinners, okay? I, I, when I read that scripture, I feel it because, you know, in – and I really love older brothers, you know, from the prodigal son yeah. uh, parable, the older brothers who, who didn't wander so far. Yeah. Um, and I wish I'd been one of them, but I wasn't. And, and so I wandered way far away. And I'm just thankful that, that God saw, saw fit to bring me home. Amen. Amen. John is an author of a great book called Nehemiah Strong. We have it right here, folks. And, uh, I love the title, and he brought me this right here, which I just love this, uh, the lion, the, the, the shield. He's coming. The lion's alive. He's coming out of the shield, a shield of faith. But I always think of the shield of faith. I never thought about the shield of faith that the lion, the tribe of Judah, is leading away, coming mm -hmm. out of that. No wonder you can't get through the shield of faith. <laughs> where, where are you going to go? Yeah, you know, you got to retreat. Amen, amen. <laughs> so you wrote this book, Jeremiah Strong, and folks, you can get a copy of it if you go to John's website. And uh, use the promo code Begley1. You can save 10%. Yep. Uh, it would really be cool if you did that. And John would truly appreciate it. And look at this. It's uh, life-sustaining essentials for a season of trial. Tell me the reasoning. What led you? I mean, the Lord led you. But what prompted you to take this particular subject and to write a book? Well, uh I'll tell you, first of all, it started with a, just a simple video I saw from uh, Celeste Solom. Oh, yeah, I think yeah, you know yeah, Celeste. yeah. And uh, she was talking about another subject, but in the middle of it, she said, oh, and by the way, when they come knock on your door, and she's a woman who knows. Yes. She was a 20-year executive and planner at FEMA, DHS. And, right. And, uh, and she said, almost in passing, we, they're going to come, and when they come knocking on your door, it, it'd be really helpful if you had a one-page constitutional questionnaire and by the way, here's some constitutional no trespassing signage and talked about it for about a minute. Yeah. And then went on about her business. And it just, you know how the Holy Spirit works. That latched on in my spirit. Yeah. And I just, I couldn't stop thinking about, first of all, wow, that moment's coming. Amen. Amen. <laughs> because I, I'm not used to dealing with that moment. Amen. And then so many people could be so equipped, so better equipped for that moment if they, had the right mindset, if they understood the nature of what was going on, if they had the tools to work with. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit, you know, I kind of had a, a Gideon walk before that. I got involved in uh, in uh, working against, you know, certain activities in uh, society that I won't speak to directly, but uh, very unrighteous. And we, we've had some big wins there recently. Uh, then I went from there to counter human trafficking and then, and then this was sort of the next yeah. thing for me. And, and God laid it on my heart. Hey, you, you've got to go work on this. And what I love, Paul, was that when I started, I had the, the, my idea would have been a booklet. 
<laughs> it would have been a, book a chapter. I mean, this is a big John, big book, <laughs> 300 and what? 300 and 480. 480 pages. Yeah. I like the fact that it's big and you can read it. You know, you got to, you, you don't have to strain. Yeah, the print okay. is big. Print's it's, it's, big. Yeah. But, so, yeah, you thought you was going to make a pamphlet? Yeah, not a pamphlet, but yeah, like but, a, a mini book, okay. a small book. Yeah. And and um, <laughs> what was neat was that as I was writing, the Holy Spirit really laid it on my on my spirit. Say, hey, you know, they need encouragement. They need scripture to equip them and scripture for them to memorize, to, to be strong in the fight. Um, they need to understand things like spiritual warfare or spiritual authority, all these things that they're all relevant to that knock on the door, but they apply to so much more. They apply to this entire season in terms of our posture, because, and I know you know this scripture, and I, I suspect you love it as much as I do, but in, in Daniel, uh, I think it's 1132, he's talking about this season we're sailing into. Yes. And Daniel from 2,600 years ago says, just in the middle of talking about, you know, the, the Antichrist, he says, but they that do know their God shall be strong and, and do, do my, exploits. And mighty exploits. That's right. And he's talking about us. Yes, he is. And so we got to get equipped for that. We got to have that right spirit, but we've got to know what foundation we stand on mm -hmm. and who we are in God with his Holy Spirit as his adopted children and, and be faithful to that calling so Amen. that we are among those who are strong and who do exploits. Amen. You know, I was thinking about this when I was reading your book. I was thinking about our ministry. We hear from all kinds of people who work in the government. We hear mm -hmm. from people who work in the NSA, uh, the CIA, uh, just, you know, and all agencies, Christians, Christians mm -hmm. who love the Lord, love their country, uh, but, you know, are trepidatious with some mm -hmm. of the things they're seeing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we say to them, well, we need you to know that Obadiah worked for a King Ahab and Jezebel. Mm -hmm. Daniel worked was in one of the presidents in the in the Babylon Babylon Empire. Mm -hmm. Joseph was the governor of Egypt. God puts His people in key positions, mm -hmm. even with some of the things that may be going on is not what we believe is correct. God still wants His representatives everywhere. Mm -hmm. So your book teaches us to not only know our godly principles and know the word of God and how to be strong in our faith, but to also know the laws of the land, the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And that's something most Americans, I'll be honest with you, most Americans probably have never read the Constitution, not even once. Mm -hmm. I don't think our public schools are teaching it anymore, or if they are, they're watering it down or discouraging from it. Yeah. So people don't know their rights they don't know their constitutional rights and they don't know the biblical rights. Yeah. And you try to bring this all out, don't you? I do. And what's really neat, and you, you highlighted that just now, but what's really gratifying is that our, our legal, secular, constitutional rights are grounded in the scripture. I mean, it, it all originates back to the Tanakh. You're you know, right. The, you're the right. Five, the five books of the Bible, that the, uh, what Moses wrote. Right. And, uh, and, and so our constitution, our foundation of our laws, and by the way, the foundation that even uh, provides for this office that these people hold who knock on our door. And that that's something, Paul, that I feel really strongly about. If somebody comes and tells you that, that your constitutional rights are suspended, then they don't get the constitution when you don't, right? right. They don't get to have authority and an office lording over you if they claim that you don't get your constitutional rights. Oh, you so see my point? Your point is if they come and say to you, you don't have those rights anymore, then guess what? Neither do they. They don't have an office. They don't even have an office. There's no office <laughs> if I don't have my constitution. Right. They so, work for us. Yes. Not we are subject to them. And in the beginning of the constitution, we, the people, they made it really clear in those letters. I know. Are, you know, 84.5, whatever. <laughs> they didn't have the word font back then. Yeah, I know. The, the concept was certainly there. Yes. That, um, that, we, the uh, people. Yes, absolutely. So when you say they come knocking on our door, yeah. uh, some Americans are already experiencing this. Yes. And the thought is that we maybe are going to have a lot more uh, government overreach. Yes. We see this in other countries. 
Europe, Australia, New Zealand, different parts of the fr Canada, free, free societies that are now seemingly under more a government overreach. Yeah. Um, do you see that happening here in America? You see that coming? Absolutely. And I think you can see it setting up. I think, um, you know, last week there was a speech and it was, it was, it was really a demarcation line, I think, in terms of the, the tone and the nature of, of where we lie in the timeline. Um, kind of a level of hostility between yeah. so-called authorities and, and us as citizens. And um, they, there simply are a bunch of things that they're going to have a great deal of trouble accomplishing if they don't show up, if they don't knock on doors. And, and truth be told, I think that, you know, there's the scripture, uh, the wicked flee when none pursue, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Amen. Well, let's, first of all, let's be as bold lion. as this lion. <laughs> right. Let's get, let's, let's know who, like that. Let's know who the lion of the tribe of Judah, Judah is. And then let's be as bold as that. Yeah. Let's walk in that. And let's that doesn't mean, that. that doesn't mean you're super kinetic. You're not trying no. to recreate some action movie. No, you're, but you are calm. You're present. You're, you're strong. Um, but to your point from a minute ago, you know what your rights are. And, and we were talking uh, right before we started recording about, how Paul was about, you know, he went back to Jerusalem. Yep. He knew he was in mortal danger. Yes, he, he was did. still trying to preach the gospel. I yep. love that picture. He's exhorting his countrymen, his yes. fellow Jews. Begging them to yeah. hear what he had to this say. This is the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. And, and they want to destroy him, of course. Yes. And, and so he's about to get tortured, probably to death by the Romans who just don't want trouble. They it must be a troublemaker. If you, is he a problem to you guys? Okay, let's yeah. get rid of him. Yeah, and while we're at it, yeah, yeah we're good at torturing, so we'll yeah, do some so of that. that yeah. but, but then Paul plays the uh, trump card. No he plays the trump card. And he says, "Do you, effectively, I'm, I'm not quoting exactly, but he says, do you realize you're about to torture a Roman citizen? citizen. And everything changed. Yes. He knew his rights as a Roman citizen. Yeah. So he knew them. He, you he got knew to them. know you have some. <laughs> so it's important to know your rights. Yes. Because how can you use them if you don't know them? Exactly. And it's important to know your rights, not only in the Constitution and the law, but you need to know your rights, your uh, rights given to you from your creator, from God. Yes. Your biblical rights, yep. which the Constitution came from, yep. came from Judeo-Christian Values, as you said, the the Torah, the, the Tanakh, uh, take the Old Testament and yeah. the the New Testament values and uh, Christianity and and uh, and the law, and basically put together a constitution of government. Yeah, that's the greatest government was ever formed. Yeah, and so so it, what's what's neat, Paul? Because you go write a book, and and I don't know about you, I know you've written several books, but you go writing a book, you wind up writing things you weren't expecting to write uh, yeah. when you get started. One of the neat aspects of writing this book was that it, it actually has two sections that are really complementary. Just like we're talking now, there's a section uh, on our spiritual authority. Yeah. So as Christians, there is an astounding body of scripture that, that informs us that we, God means for us to be active representatives. Amen. His adopted children on a mission in this world, right? And, and it doesn't just stop with the gospel. You know, yeah. it, it it includes the gospel, and the gospel should be first and foremost, and yeah. comma, lots of other authorities to uh, to exert God's will for goodness, for righteousness, for holiness, and and holding back, defending against wickedness. Amen. That we, you know, I I don't know about you. Wow. Paul. I'm really I'm really curious about your input on this. Okay. Okay. Uh, I feel convicted. Okay. When I like Roe v. Wade, yeah, or what goes on in the uh, in uh, in schools? Yes, w what's been taken out of schools? Yes, okay, and uh, convicted about how we and then our fathers before us allowed this flood to come in. What what could have happened if we stood up earlier? If our fathers had had known to stand up earlier right. and to confront the evil, uh, but but we're especially, here now, especially in the last. I'm going to say since the 1970s. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because it seems like we seen this. Um, we were told us lie. We were told that separation of church and state, which is not in the Constitution. No. 
Henry Black wrote that in a dissent in 1948. That was his opinion. That's not in the Constitution. Yeah. Even John F. Kennedy said that there's separation of church and state in his inaugural address. It's not in the Constitution. No. Okay, so that's... The that's, lie gets repeated, the, gets repeated and then it becomes true. its way into our consciousness. Yeah, our consciousness. Yeah. So, okay. So we were told that. We were also told... So, so the churches started telling their pastors and the pastors started telling the congregation, guys, let's just all stay out of politics. Let, the, let those guys take care of that. We just do what we're supposed to do. Well, the problem is, without the church, there is no government. Without the Christians, there is no constitution. And so we, we just we backed out. And guess what happened? Our schools eroded. The truth got removed. The word of God got removed. Our, now history's been removed. Now mm. the statues are coming down. Mm. And it's a, it's a cleaning away of, the, of our, our history. And if we don't, you know, Abraham and Lincoln told us, if you don't learn from history, you're destined to repeat it. Mm. So this has been a systematic approach, don't you mm. think? Well, and think away. about this, Paul. It's not just the absence of these historical principles and, and mores and behaviors, activities, where Christians have seeded the battlefield. It's the replacement of those things oh. by a different doctrine. Oh, there you okay? go. Yes. So we create a void. Well, nature abhors a void, and the enemy, I mean, he, the he, enemy just sees that it. as open ground. Yep. They'll just take it with, with so little resistance. Yes. And so we, we've got to wake up. I'll tell you, over these last few years, to, to be woken up as much as I've been, to see the true nature of the world, to see how dark evil is. You yes. know, evil isn't kind of a Disney. It's, it's not a character in a cartoon. No. It is really our enemy and it really wishes to do us harm yeah. and we've got to be active against that we've got to push against that and resist speaking of that you uh you did you traveled some and, and worked some with the late russ disdo <sighs> yeah so you learned a little bit about spiritual warfare he gave me this did he really yeah and it's joshua 1 9 uh, all right it says uh be strong and have good courage be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the lord thy god is with thee amen whithersoever thou goest amen and that you know one of the things that, that's really come alive for me in recent years, Paul, is, is that's for me too. Um, the, the angel in that picture, which I think was Jesus Christ, I think that was a Christophany, um, he said it to Joshua. Yes. But we know from... It's for us too. Yes. Every, every, every promise is yes and amen. Amen. Through Jesus Christ. Yes. And, and so that's for us too. And we can be strong like Joshua. Yes. He was a type for us. He, he set yes. an example for us. And we can walk in that example, that strength, that faith, so that we can slay the dragons of our era. Amen. Like he slayed the dragons of his era. Amen. Speaking of dragons and Nephilim. <laughs> <laughs> Were you I, just I, throwing I shade at me? No, no. I have to tell a story to the... So I'm preaching in uh, <laughs> Chicago, Gurney, Illinois. I'm doing a big conference in Gurney, Illinois with the Hagmans mm -hmm. and Russ Disdom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had 600 people showed up. It was a big crowd. And uh, I was talking, I was up there talking about the, the Nephilim. I think uh, Russ had already done a presentation. He already talked about it. And uh, I said, these guys, these, these giants, man, they, they, you know, they were huge, you know, nine foot six or 10 foot tall, maybe 13 foot tall. And some of them had six fingers and six toes. And John stood up and went like this. I only got five. I mean, <laughs> five fingers. Five fingers. You just let Confirmed. me go. Confirmed. You're not video. Definitely... There's video proof okay, now. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Okay. See? I mean... <laughs> But you, you know, you're like, hey, I'm not a Nephilim. <laughs> I, we killed you were show, throwing shade at me then, and you're throwing yeah, shade at me again. Still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a Samson. Okay, you're a Samson in Thank today's you. world. Thank we you. need, we need uh, strong, uh, not only just strong physically men, but we need strong spiritual men, men of integrity, men of of wisdom, men of great strength, and not afraid. You know, uh, I'm going to preach a sermon this coming Sunday in Florida called Naked and Afraid. Mm. Okay, that's the message. I saw that there's a TV show like that. And I said, what? Yeah. And the Lord said, well, you want to know who the original Naked and Afraid was? Go, go read Genesis. Because mm -hmm. when Adam saw that he was naked, it said he was afraid. Of who? Of God. 
And why? Because God was going to reveal to him, hey, you broke my laws. Wow. All I ask you to do is don't touch that one tree. Don't eat of that one tree. Uh, that's why you're afraid. And I think sometimes that uh, we're afraid as Christians of something that's not even truth. We believe a lie. We, if we're not careful, we let the devil plant the seed to lie, and then we get afraid. We, we don't have to be afraid. Yeah. Well, and, and, and we're informed by Scripture, too, Paul. The buttress is just what you're saying. Perfect love casts, casts out, out fear. fear. That's right. And so if, if your fear, in my mind's eye, fear and faith cannot coexist. Amen. Amen. And, and Amen. You want to get rid of your fear. You grow in your, your faith. faith. Get in the word. Yep. Get serious about your prayer life. Yep. Find a, a terrific preacher like Pastor Paul here to, to, to sit Inspire under and you. to learn from and yeah, encourage you. Yep. And, uh, and get serious about your faith. The fear, it's amazing. That Amen. It away, Amen. It? This book, folks, Jeremiah Strong, is powerful because John takes scriptural truths, applies it to your life, but he gives you practical, very practical instruction and preparation. It's, it's like you prepare them for spiritual battle and, and how to protect their home, their family. Your property. Believe it or not, this is what this whole, this whole country was founded on. Mm -hmm. To have your own property, to have your own home, to have your own family. Mm -hmm. Live at peace with your neighbor. I was just showing John out here in my home that the, the neighbor next door, has a, he has about 100 acres here. And uh, there was a fence when, when we came here. there was a, He had a fence already there. I don't know, maybe he didn't get along with the neighbor before. I don't know. And he came down and he said, hey, is it all right if we just take that fence down? I said, oh, praise God, please. I don't want to have to trim around it. Yeah, take it down. We don't need a fence. I want to be able to get up in the morning and walk out and look at your beautiful soybeans out here and, and yeah. see wide open spaces, you know. So uh, I think that what we need in our life is to have this relationship with one another and mm. be strong in our faith and not be afraid to express it. Isn't that what the devil's trying to do is silence us? Yeah. And think about think about how viciously the uh, the institution of the church was attacked in the last couple of years, shut down mm. when everything else was not. The, the churches were attacked to be shut down, Amen. more so in some jurisdictions than others, yep. but attacked pretty uniformly. And uh, and I think I agree with you. I think I think the devil and his minions are terrified of the power that we have corporately when we get together, when we encourage each other, when we pray together, when we turn our attention like a bunch of spotlights on an issue and we pray for something or we pray and bind things, pray against things. I think, I think the enemy is You're terrified right. of that. Yeah, and, and look at what happens. For example, in communist countries, yeah. they, they, they go hard against the churches. They don't want that. There's a reason they, because they know how powerful yeah. the church and is. In some ways, I think they understand that better than we do. I do. They under, actually, I do believe that, that the, 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 the devil, he understands the power we have more than the church understands the power we have. Yeah. Uh, so, and if, if these communist countries, the first thing we do is we want to take these Bibles away. We saw what we and you and I talked earlier about Dmitry Dudeman, how that, you know, he, he uh, smuggled these Bibles into the communists under the Iron Curtain. I mean, just unbelievable. Yeah. And then they would try to arrest them and they try to search and they couldn't see. They, would, they couldn't see the Bibles were right there. They couldn't see them. God like shielded them from yeah. them. But he walked, he was a man of faith. He wasn't afraid. They executed him twice. They electrocuted him twice, and he wouldn't die. Like Paul. Be yeah, stunned, like right? Paul. I never thought about that. Couldn't kill, kill him. Get rid of him. We can't kill him. <laughs> Ship him away. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a great testimony. No wonder his uh, grandsons are so powerful in the Lord, you know, uh, yeah. Michael and Dan, and, and great work they do. So, again, folks, if you go to John's website there on the screen, and if you use the promo code BEGLY1, Okay, that's johndislin.com, www.johndislin.com. Use the promo code BEGLY1. You can save 10% on the price of this book. And uh, he's got them in stock. You ship them ASAP. Yeah, John. next day. Next day, so you can't go wrong there. I, I really think, what is it you want people? What is, I mean, this book's 400 some pages, but what if you had to say two things or one thing, what would be the one thing you want to have people come away from this book? 
That's a good question. That's a good one. <laughs> you, you got me. That's on a that tough one, one right there. Because um, you got so much good stuff. Well, there. my answer is a little. I'm, I'm not trying to dodge it, but the 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 comprehensive nature of this book. It's okay. not just about the knock on the door. It's not just about your spiritual uh, wellness and and foundation and yep. authority. Um, it's and that's why it took almost two years to write, Paul, because I got I wrote it almost as if. I was thinking, okay, this might be my only conversation with this person. Somebody wow. buys this book. Yes. I, I might not have another chance to reach this person. That's and right. so I kept folding things in in terms of communications or uh, different things that are for your health, you know, that can yeah. help you out or uh, building community, building teams. And, and, you Making talk a sure. lot about that building teams. Yes, ham radios. Yeah, communications. Communications so big. big. Yeah, because they're, they're going to sever the communication. That's one thing you yeah. know. It's like in any warfare. And we we think these these mobile phones are point to point. They are not point to point. I mean, no. if the tower goes down, you're you're point, out. You're point to nothing. Ham radio is still a way to operate analogly outside the the system and yep. and. We need to build a Christian network on ham radio. Oh man! Where, where there's like just be thousands and thousands of Christians that are all connected, and so that if, if uh, for some reason all these get shut off on us, and, and they can shut off all of them, the ones that they want. Yeah, they can shut anybody and everybody's off. Yes, they want to. and with a, I, with like that the switch. And uh, how would we communicate? Yeah. Uh, we wouldn't even know where you know. We go to the. We go to the. Oh, we don't have internet. Oh, we can't. We don't have our phone. We don't. We need to have a backup plan, which is uh, a tremendous plan of communication with the body of Christ. Because yeah. in these last days, the church of Jesus Christ will come under tremendous persecution. As you know, I'm telling you, it's happening already in a lot of parts of the world. America doesn't realize it, but it is really happening in a lot of the, a lot of the countries of the world. America is the strongest nation in the world because God has blessed it. Um, we are we the church of Jesus Christ. We have an opportunity to continue to carry the gospel. Yeah. And uh, so we got to know our rights. Got to know how to communicate. Sounds like there's some strategic planning that need to be done. Yeah. Some captains need to be chosen. <laughs> and I'll tell you something that, that, that's been so gratifying. And I was telling you before, you know, as I was writing this thing, I started thinking, you know, is anybody going to read this thing? <laughs> is anybody going to want it? Is anybody going to care? And, uh, you know, that's that's sobering when you're in the midst of that. What's project. the feedback you've got so far? Oh, that's what I was going to get to is the the breadth of the expertise of the people who really love this book. I've, I've just been astounded by. So Praise God. preachers like you, yep. um, uh, spec ops warriors. Wow. Have, awesome. have said I, I had one guy I've got. 50 some odd reviews on, on my yeah. website. And I would really encourage you, if you want to go, johndoeslin.com slash reviews, go read the reviews yeah. and see what people say. There we go. There's your website. Yeah. See what people say about, um, and Brock, if you click on the reviews tab up top, that you can see some of the reviews. Um, so yeah, I, I had one gentleman say, I think he was a Marine. He said, I was a Marine 50 years ago. He said, this reminds me of a lot of the core training I got as a Marine. This is, this is exactly the kind of thing we need today. So, so military, I've heard from uh, pastors. I've heard from uh, people who have been involved in preparing for things for yep. years. Yep. And just the, the breadth of people with expertise who have said, this is really equipping. This is really on point. This is, has been humbling. To this me. is a must read for preppers, too. Mm. Must read. You know, yeah. because you know, a lot of times when I, when I when I think about preppers, all of us that are preparing for whatever may come, and yeah. all of you in some way or another are preparing in some way. You may not be as uh, hundred percent like as dogmatic as others, but what I find out is a lot of preppers is they're preparing to protect their own. Mm. But this is bigger than this. We have to figure out how we're going to communicate. How are we going to protect the community? Of, mm -hmm. of believers yeah so and this book emphasizes that yeah big you know, time because i've done some interesting training with interesting people <laughs> much more interesting than me i just kind of stick my nose in you know and uh and one of the things you hear about from people who've been to challenging places and done challenging things is they talk about force multipliers 
And, mm. and that's a military concept. It's what, what are the things, the principles, the tools that I can have that multiply my capabilities, my forcefulness, my defensibility. Um, one of them is comms. And in fact, uh, there's a gentleman, John Moore at the Liberty. Yeah, Man, I know it. Yeah, John Moore. Okay. Yeah. He talks about how it feels when you're in Vietnam and your comms yeah. are out. Yeah. Ooh. And he said that was worse than getting shot at. Yeah, you're cut off from, yeah. oh, that's not good. Yeah, so comms is a big one. Big one. Um, and then another one, well, another one is night vision, which, yeah. you know, at nighttime people do squirrely yeah. stuff. Yeah, we have to see. That's to be able to see when they can't see you is, yeah. uh, big is advantage. an advantage. But, um, the, but community. Yes. So, so being part of a team, yep. what they'll do, back to the knock on the door, they'll knock on your door. Let's say you're, uh, you know, an 82-year-old widow and your kids are 45 minutes away. They knock on your door and they've got, you know, two police officers with sidearms. They've got two healthcare workers who are really contract temps who yeah. read off a script. They don't really know healthcare. They just, they just yeah. present something. Uh, you know, you're outnumbered yeah. and you're, you're not prepared. You're not expecting it, all this kind of stuff. You were surprised. This was expected. written for her yeah. and, and a lot of other people. But if you've got a plan, if you've thought about this ahead of time, if you've got somebody you can reach out to immediately and say, hey, can you rally the team? Yep. It, it's a whole different encounter with that force multiplier of community. Yeah, what a great point. That, let's say if she's if she knows the team, she knows who she, she knows she can make one phone call, and uh, all of a sudden there's six there's six other team members on their way. Mm -hmm. And while she's saying, guys, sit down a minute, let me get you some tea. Yeah, you know, six <laughs> some, six more people walk in saying, okay, so what's up with it? What you, hello what shooting are you doing? video. Shooting video. Hey, video is a force multiplier in today's social media age. It is. And, um, you know, I was doing a sort of ministry I can't say much about on here. Uh, and, and people will be, would be very badly behaved in that environment. And you, you flash up your, your camera, you start videoing them. It, it's unbelievable change the, the effect it has on behavior. Yeah. When they, they immediately think of, of social media, they immediately think of their face being all over Yeah, they and, know. and the accountability. That's what it does. Yeah. Cause part of what goes on, if you've got a team and somebody knocks on your door, you're building a case. Yeah. Okay. You're taking video. You're, you're getting a, in, in one case, a seven page questionnaire filled out of somebody. So, you know, they, they know how the cow ate the yeah, cabbage. They yeah. know, you know, how the cow ate the cabbage, right? Cause you're getting the responses. You're going to get their signature. You're, you're saying that's, to them, that, that's the before price of admission. You, before you start asking me questions, you're on my property. I got, you got to answer some questions for me first. Yes. Okay. You, you start, you, you start the process. You are the king of your castle. That's right. Don't let them. And, and listen, this, this pains me to say this, but I know it to be true. Visitors to your castle are trained to use deception mm. and fear tactics to extract compliance from you without regard for whether it's in your best interest. And so understanding that, understanding they're putting on a, a, a horror show theater to get compliance. That's, wow. that's all they care about. You see that as theater. And you, it's almost like looking behind the curtain of the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. You see it's this little old man pulling levers in the back. Yeah. And suddenly you can almost laugh about it because, oh, they're trying to make me scared. I'm not going down that path. Yeah. I'm taking them down my path of who are you? Yeah. What rights you have to be here? What's the law? What's the code What's the that code? says you can be here? Because it better be passed by a legislature. It, I don't want to hear about, about any about... department of something or no, other no, no, laying down no, on high. No. Yeah. Not taking it. No, no, because it's it's your theater. You put on your production, which is turning the tables on them. Right, and that's this goes dozens and scores. And you're of back pages to your Daniel that. eleven thirty two, and those mm. that and those that know their God will do mighty exploit, and mm. will teach others, okay, mm -hmm. of His ways of righteousness. In other words, you become not just do you know, but you become an instructor with others. In other words, we're sharing it, yep. to training others. That's what you're doing right here training others how to be jeremiah strong yeah. and i gotta ask you why did you use oh, excuse me nehemiah nehemiah strong why did you use nehemiah well a couple reasons the first okay. one is that um you know nehemiah i know you know this but nehemiah was sent back from uh medo persia at that point to 
Israel to Jerusalem to rebuild the wall, rebuild the city and yep. rebuild the temple. Yep. And, and God laid it on his heart and he was right there with the king and, and the king commissioned him. It was a really lovely picture of the king blessing, blessing him in him. his mission to come back and do this. And so he comes back and they are rebuilding this wall against hostile enemies of which we might have a couple we, in our day. Yeah, yeah we and, probably do. And it said, in fact, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but it, effectively they were building with one hand and on their other hand, they, they had their they had hand a on the, the sword. Other hand. Yeah. Yes, they did. And so they were, they were preparing provisionally in terms of, of defense and, and protecting and providing for their yes. family, their community. Yes. And their community. That's, that's community. a picture of oh, community. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because they worked in shifts. Yes. Worked together. Worked together. Not just isolated. And But they had defense. Always. And they knew they had enemies. And, and what's neat, I think, is that, um, you know, there's uh, – there's a Latin phrase, civis pacem parabellum. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> you like that? Do some I do, there. you got me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If you want peace, if you seek peace, prepare for war. Ah. Strongholds are, are, are oh. not attacked like the weak are. Exactly. And so you actually prevent war the violence by, by being prepared, prepared because they war. know not to cross the line. That's right. You. And so there's a, there's, a, there's a peace that comes with There's the enemy understanding that we hear this strong. all the time, uh, uh, peace through strength. Yes. Okay. We hear that all the time. But, and, and that's not just at a national level. No, that's, that's it's an individual. Community level. Community level. Home level. Yep. Yes. There's peace through strength. Yep. And uh, it's, it's great. And I'll and, tell you, can I add? Yeah, go ahead. So you asked about why Nehemiah. Yeah, why Nehemiah. There, there's another verse in there that I love, and it says... Um, that miraculously they rebuilt the wall in 52 days. That's because they tried that. for something like 20 years. Yes. 20 years. They yeah. couldn't do it in 20 <laughs> years. <laughs> and they did it in 52, 52 days. In God's strength. Yes. In his will. It, everybody knew it was a miracle. It was. And the, 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 the heathen tribes around them were despondent because they knew that God was in it. Yeah. And then God can be in this for us. There's too. a scripture in there that says that the, uh, the, uh, the enemies around the heathens around said, Oh, these feeble Jews, are trying to build their wall. He said, a fox could run through it, okay? It's, you know, yeah. they'll never get it done. But then when they saw it was done, and the, the fact it was done in 52 days, what couldn't be done in 20 years, yeah. it, it put everybody on notice yeah. that uh, the Lord is in control. The God's hand was in it. That's right. Yep. So. And But I think that applies for us. The God's hand, God's hand can be in us. Amen. God's hand can be in our efforts to defend our families. And, and for those who say, oh, you know, God will protect me or whatever, you know, there, there's so many instances in scripture where he expects us to help yes, ourselves he first. Yes, he does. And then he sees us through, right? Amen. But, but what, what are we willing to do first with our understanding, you know, like the sons of Issachar, First yep. Chronicles uh, yep. 1232, I think? I don't know. Okay. And, and it says, it's, it's talking about the different tribes and of yep. the sons of Issachar who had understanding that they might, uh, that they knew the times and understood what Israel ought to do. Of their 200 captains, all joined the army of David. Amen. And so, so God will step in and move for us when we move, but... Um, but he's looking for us to move. And oh, and I was going to say, I'm sorry, I, I lost track. Okay. Um, there's a scripture that says, um, he who does not provide for his family is worse than an infidel. Absolutely. It's, it's not talking just about food. No. It's not just it's, shelter. It's, it's providing protection. protection. Yes. Overall, the overall well being. Yes. Food, shelter, comprehensive section. Yeah. Right. You don't get to like, feed your family out in a field with no roof over them. No, right? well, it's, it's, that? it's the whole it's picture. The whole picture. Yeah. And I love the fact that, uh, you know, Gideon is another great example of being fully submitted to God and mm -hmm. listening to God's direction to win the battle. Uh, David, of course, was a great warrior. I mean, if you just study the Bible, folks, you'll find out that it's all about warfare. Yeah, it's basically all about warfare. I mean, you know, all the kings and the prophets and everything. It's all about warfare. And can I tell you a story that plays into what yeah. we're talking about? You're talking about Gideon. Yes. I think for a lot of you all listening, you think, oh, that's not for me. I'm not, you know, I'm not strong enough or I, I can't, I can't. If there's any version of I can't in your thinking, as you think about girding yourself for this battle on this battlefield that we are on, you are on right now. We're in it right now. I would encourage you to think about Gideon because his story is so beautiful to me. And I've seen it play out in my own life where it starts 
and he is threshing wheat in the wine press. Yes, he's yes. hiding from the Midianites yes, yeah. so they won't steal his yes, food. Yeah, he just said that. Yeah, and it and it he he does a little thing out of uh, faithfulness. He, he he bakes a little cake on an altar. Yeah. Then he kills his dad's second bull, which had to take some gumption. I, I don't know what your dad was like, but if I killed my dad's second bull, <laughs> I'm telling you, my dad's right in there right now. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not messing with him. You're anything. not messing with his second bull. He's 86 years old. I'm not messing with yeah. nothing. He's so like, then Gideon, so he, yeah. he ramps it up. He develops, he, he, he grows his faith. He grows his fearlessness. Then he tears down the altar yes. to the demon god. I know, that was amazing. Yes, but, but you see the progression. He yep. goes from small, small to, to medium stronger, to large to, stronger, to, to triple super extra large. So that's why he was growing in his faith. That's why he was prepared yeah. to take on this great task. He grew in it. He grew in and, it. And this, you know, one way, one way to think about this book is this book was written to encourage you, to develop you, to help you strengthen for this, uh, this battle that's raging around us. I heard this great story. I was talking to um, Doug Hagman okay. uh, last week, and he told me about a woman who he sent this book to. I, I'm, I'm not crack up talking about because it I love it so much. And according to her, the, the, the book encouraged her and strengthened her to run for a school board. Wow. She was one of the, uh, the lovely, I think mostly women, who – ran for a school board office in South Florida, won. And she was one of the people who helped turn one of the biggest school districts in Florida from, from the from progressive to, to, to conservative. Yep. And, and, she, and said she said that, that strengthened her and, and, and that's awesome. equipped her. That's awesome. And that, I mean, if that, I, that's I, enough I, to make you be the whole two years of work and effort. Yes. It was that story alone because of the number of, Children that's going to be affected by that. The, yes. the souls that will be saved from that. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Not just their lives and their and their homes, but their eternal souls. Because when you when you can change what's being digested, you know, it, you know, the Bible tells us when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Mm. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Mm -hmm. And so, okay. <laughs> you experienced any mourning lately? Yeah. <laughs> so you see what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, the Bible's true, folks. It yeah. just tells you plain wow. out what's going to happen. So, again, go to uh, johndislin.com. That's www.johndislin.com. And use the discount code BEGLY1. Get 10% off on the price. Let's get this shipped tomorrow. You need to order it today so it can be shipped tomorrow. And uh, get ready for, uh, for what's coming. You'll be prepared. You won't be caught off guard. You'll be prepared. And the Lord will bless you and protect your family and bless you. And, and you'll be part of a community. Mm. And, uh, you know, the Jamie Waldens of the world mm -hmm. are doing what needs to be done and building a community of people. And yep. uh, that's exactly what John's done. So, John, appreciate you coming. Thank you Brother, so much. You are a good Pleasure man of God. You're a good man of God. Get the book, folks. Go right now and get the book. Uh, and be blessed, okay? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. For it's not by our might nor by our power but by his spirit thus saith the lord that's how you get strong okay you got to be you got to have knowledge you know the bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge mm. yes you get a lot of it in this one okay yeah. a lot of it in that book john thank you so much thank you for having me and god bless everybody who, who follows pastor paul I, I i pray over you psalm 91 blessings over you and um and uh, let's let's be strong in this fight. Let's let's get equipped. Be strong. Encourage each other. Amen. And uh, and and support Pastor Paul in his ministry too, because he's he's working good work and he's uh, pouring himself out to make a difference in your lives. So I encourage you to to uh, support Pastor Paul as well. Appreciate it, John. Really do. No, you, you need to be a pro wrestler. I mean, they could use. <laughs> <laughs> I was asked if I was a pro wrestler a year or two ago in a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe could, I missed my calling. Yeah, you could. No, you could. You could. You can become the new Nehemiah Strong. Yeah, I, I'd love to see you go out on the on the uh, WWE. Imagine and, the outfit I'd be oh, wearing: leather awesome, and man. rings, come out and come oh. out a big shield with that lion. Yeah, take on the Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, God bless all of you. Love you. Okay, and we'll talk to you next time right here on.